This is End Screen Noise. My name is Colin Dixon, founder and chief analyst at End Screen Media, and today is February 27th, 2015. Kids content is becoming the new battlefield between OTT and pay TV these days. Two big announcements and several other smaller announcements show that it is becoming really a focus of OTT activity and is beginning to really impact television delivery of kids content. Last year Nickelodeon made an announcement that they will be delivering a direct to kid service in 2015 and they followed through with the launch of Noggin. Noggin will launch on March 5th and is targeting preschoolers, that is kids, you know, in that preschool five and below range and has a great raft of content including Blue's Clues and Little Bear. And it will be all on demand. There will be no broadcast channel. Uh, this is unlike uh, the Watch Disney apps, authenticated apps, which include the broadcast channels. Um, so it is a purely on demand service. Uh, but $6 a month is a pretty steep bar to climb to get people to pay, rather, uh, when you consider that YouTube also announced this week that it had a free YouTube Kids area now, uh, and it was populating that with well-known favorites such as Sesame Street, Fraggle Rock, Thomas the Tank Engine, and Reading Rainbow. So lots of free content there. Not wishing to be outdone, uh, Netflix also announced that they will be investing in their kids zone, uh, which has been doing very, very well amongst the, uh, the younger generation. And they are actually going to be resurrecting two shows which may be familiar to this audience. Danger Mouse and Inspector Gadget will be getting new cartoon shows uh, through Netflix. So that's uh, five new shows through there. And Amazon as well is investing in its kid, kids content. Um, the company announced that it will be renewing four of its shows and releasing those through its uh, kids area on its, its site as well. So it is a very competitive OTT market that we see that uh, Nickelodeon is launching Noggin into at $6 a month. And I gotta tell you, many of the people that they're targeting with this already probably have access to Amazon or Netflix or maybe both, and certainly have access now to this free YouTube Kids channel, or YouTube Kids Zone rather. So how you're going to get a lot of people to pay $6 a month when there is so much content available online is a mystery, uh, but I guess we will see. However, their reasons for launching online are pretty solid. You don't have to look very far to see why there is so much activity online. Uh, Nielsen says that in the age group K2 through 11, uh, well, TV viewing is really falling fast. In 2011, that group was watching about 110 hours and 17 minutes of television a month. And by 2014, that had fallen to 102 hours and 54 minutes. While at the same time, internet video viewing is growing fast. In 2011, in that age group, it was just two hours and 14 minutes. And in 2014, it had grown to six hours and 16 minutes. And I must admit, when I talk to uh, parents, they tell me that their kids watch almost no live TV at all these days. It's all focused around viewing on tablets and on smartphones and iPod touches, devices like that. You've got to ask why. Why is OTT resonating so well with, with both parents and with children? Well, it seems to give two things that I think are very valuable that pay television doesn't do as well. The first thing is it gives parents control. They can put them in a safe area and this new service from YouTube provides a safe area for viewing as does Netflix's kids content. So the kids can go there and watch and the parents don't have to supervise what they're watching because all of the content is safe. The second thing it does is it allows kids to in that age group, in the preschool age group, to do what they want to do, which is to watch the same show again and again and again. 
and of course there are no additional charges for that uh, repetitive viewing which kids love to do so much. So I think that's the reason why we're seeing such explosive growth online and you've got to ask how long before Disney joins the direct-to-consumer fray? Right now, Disney is doing extremely well with its, with its channels. They continue to do well online, handily beating uh, Nickelodeon in ratings. Uh, but clearly, viewership is moving online, and i got to believe that it can't be long before Disney decides to enter that market too with a kid's product. And when they do, you'll be first to hear about it on End Screen Noise. We'll see you again next time.